from Bangkok, the capital of Thailand. We first came here four years ago when we started traveling full time and it quickly became one of our favorite cities in the world. We have passed through here a few times before, mainly just through the, the airport. It's very noisy, you can hear. So we're starting the day in the old town of Bangkok where we're staying. We're actually staying in that hotel there, Tara Place it's called. And we get this included in the price. So this little cafe here, we get like a breakfast included. So Carol went for the fruit and yogurt and mine is the Thai breakfast. So it's rice, there's some chicken in there, uh, ginger, garlic, really nice. I had this uh, yesterday. So we've met up with my parents now and we're gonna explore Bangkok now. So we're heading to the Grand Palace, which we've never been to for some reason. It's like the most visited attraction here in Bangkok too. But we didn't go last time, I, I don't know why. So we're heading there now. And we can walk there, it's about a 20, 25 minute walk. Usually that distance we just decide to walk. It's also better to look around as well. I didn't mention, but this is the area that we stayed in last time, Old Town, Bangkok. Not this exact part. It, I think it was further down there somewhere, but yeah, we just like this area. I guess it looks more uh, real and authentic. There is a very modern side to Bangkok too, which we'll probably show either in this video or the next video. We're gonna check that out at some point. Interesting street food. You'll see uh, street food all over in, in Bangkok, everywhere. Yeah, loads of stalls here. I hadn't seen this area yet because we walked through here at night, and at night none of this was here. So, this is the famous Kawasan Road, mainly comes to life at night. You remember when we came here during the day last time? Oh yeah, it was Songkran, the famous festival. I think it's the Thai New Year. It's like a massive water fight. Yeah, it was so, so fun, I think. I, I loved it. <laughs> So we've entered in the Grand Palace now. We've got the ticket here, which is 500 baht per person, but there is a strict dress code here. So I had to buy these um, like elephant pants at the store. They charge uh, 200, so way more expensive than getting it on the outside. And Carol even had to buy a t-shirt. Yeah, even though I have a, a scarf, I was putting my scarf and they said that you cannot have a scarf if you have a tank top underneath. Even temples don't mind you just covering your shoulders, but here they say you have to wear a, a t-shirt. And also for you, you had, uh, your mom had a, another scarf, so you tried to put... Like a sarong. Like a sarong, but they said no, only women can do like a sarong. So I think they just wanted you to buy uh, clothes to enter. Yeah, pretty much because we covered all our body parts and they still weren't accepting it. They just want you to buy stuff from their store. So we've got some elephant pants finally. Never bought some before. <laughs> Officially a foreigner now with elephant pants. <laughs> Before we continue with our day, we're going to talk about the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, which is our recommended VPN provider that we've been using the past two years. 
During our travels, we have to frequently connect to public Wi-Fi. So Surfshark allows us to have a private connection, keeping our personal information and data safe from potential hackers. Surfshark also allows you to avoid online restrictions when visiting internet-restricted countries. By using Surfshark, you can access any website or app anywhere in the world. Besides this, Surfshark also gives you access to all Netflix libraries. Depending on the country that we are, we have access to limited series and films on Netflix. But with Surfshark, we can set our devices to a different location and that way I can continue to watch my Brazilian TV series or any other series that I want anywhere. With just one single account, you can connect to unlimited devices, which means you can use it on all your family's devices. Click on the link in the video description, which has the discount code Jumping Places to get 83% off and three months for free. And that also includes a 30 day money back guarantee policy. Yeah, this place is super impressive though. So this has been like the official residency of the kings of Thailand since 1782. I think the current king actually lives in uh, Germany. He doesn't even live in Thailand from what I've read. But everywhere you look, just loads of different buildings, shrines. Amazing. Can't stop taking pictures. <laughs> It's really it's a visual attack, isn't it, on the eyes? Yeah, everywhere you look. Amazing. You don't know where to look. You could spend hours just look at details. Look at the blue stuff. This place really is something uh, special. Look at this building too. They're all kind of different. It's not like the same thing over and over. So you also get some really amazing paintings here going all the way down the walls. So I guess it's telling uh, the stories. Oh, this looks like a, a battle, some sort of battle. Yeah, and I guess in the past you would have had uh, fortified walls going around. I know in uh, Chiang Mai that we've been to before, you still have the walls. I don't know if there's any around uh, Bangkok anyway. Some more battles here. I like these warrior statues that they have. They have them everywhere. Especially these, look at these ones, the colorful ones, guardians. this part that we see in here is just uh, temples and shrines I think it's not even the main palace because over here says exit to the grand palace which I guess is that building back there so we're already like blown away and we haven't even seen the palace yet yeah I think this part is the Emerald Buddha temple I'm not sure which one is specifically or if it's just like the, the group of them like the complex yeah that seemed to be like the main temple we could go inside but we couldn't film also very beautiful inside this one seems to be closed off all right so i think now we're officially at the palace part which is this building here certainly looks like a, a palace i think now over there might be uh, another temple this looks like more of a modern building here this part so it looks like it's closed it doesn't look like you can go in this building so maybe you just look at it from the, the outside, not sure.
So we've now come right next door to a temple complex called Wat Po and this complex is from the 16th century. I mean th this looks very modern by the looks of it. Maybe there's some other areas that look uh, a bit older. I think it's just as busy as last time. Yeah, I think it's always busy. Yeah, everybody wants to see this statue. I don't remember where you get the best angle. Okay. It's hard to get the best angle because it's so, so big. The best angle is just seeing it with your own eyes. <laughs> See a glimpse of the head there. Look at the size of that though. That's just the head and arm. So this statue is uh, 46 meters overall. I forgot how big it was. Yeah, well, how many meters you said? Uh, 46. It's <laughs> huge. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the head is so big. All the way down, all the way down there. It seems like everyone's visited this temple here. Macron, the Pope, who else? I don't know some of these. Obama. So just like the palace, this place is also a feast for the eyes. Just beautiful structures everywhere. These stupas all over. Loads of different designs and colors. I remember this part from last time. I think this was actually the, the thumbnail somewhere around here of that video that we did. But nobody watched us back then, so that video doesn't have many views. So this is probably new to all of you. So online it says that this temple complex has the most images of uh, Buddhas in Thailand. And I can see that because they're absolutely everywhere here. I also read that this was the first educational center, public educational center in uh, Thailand and it's the birthplace of the famous Thai massage that we see on every street here. I need one. You need one? Yeah. <laughs> Aching muscles from walking. Yeah, now I have the something wrong with my neck. Oh, so neck. Yeah. Thai neck massage. <laughs> Just looking for a place to get a bite to eat now. We can see on Google Maps that there's some riverside places that should have some pretty good views. So I'm gonna try and find a, a place with a good view. So we found what we were looking for. We come to this place here called View Arun. I think it's a hotel as well. So we had to come up about four floors. Really cool rooftop place here. And it's called View Arun because that is Wat Arun over there where we're gonna head to next. I think we can get a boat across just from over here. Boat overload at the moment. So it's probably cool to come here at uh, sunset time as well. I think the sun goes down here. Get some amazing views, the more modern area down there. So this is one of those places that they make everything look fancy. You are paying more, so this is uh, 190 just for a mango shake. Nice flowers in there. And what is this dish? Uh, Fried rice with pineapple, I think. Yeah, well that's your pineapple, right? Yeah. <laughs> the food is inside of a pineapple. Chicken. Yeah, nice chicken. chicken. Yeah. I don't even know what this is. I don't know sweet and sour. I don't know. These look like shred coconut or something. I don't know. How much was that, you know? About 340, I think. About 340. 340. Now everybody's fancy dishes have arrived. So I got a sweet and sour chicken. I thought that these might have been edible, but they're not, so. Good, good job that I checked and that was 320 
Not including the rice wolf, though. And yours is tofu and mushroom? Yes, with rice. That was two ninety. Two ninety. And that's is a stir chicken, fried chicken. Chicken fried rice. Two seventy. Two seventy. It is really tasty though. I always like sweet and sour dishes and uh, pineapple and chicken really goes well together. Just going to get the boat now to cross the river to Wat Arun, and we're just coming through some market area here. Smells of spices. Not even sure what half of this stuff is. What is all this, girl? Dried <laughs> shrimp. Yeah. Oh yeah, dried shrimp. All just like different kinds, different sizes. The dried fish too. Stinky dried fish. So the boat is just five fat per person, but that is because it is super close, so pretty cheap. So this right here, is the main thing to see so this was actually our favorite place last time we came to bangkok because you could climb up it but it seems now you can only go to this like first floor when we came last time i think we could go to the third one or maybe the second one but we could go further up tight space <laughs> yeah i didn't remember these guys it looks like they're they're holding the temple up so this temple is from the 17th century and it's supposed to be named after the Hindu god Aruna. I don't think I've ever heard of that god before. Aruna. What Aruna? It's a bit later on now, it's 9pm and we come back to Kawasan Road to show it properly. The famous Kawasan Road. So you can already see, very different to uh, when we showed it earlier in the video. No, thank you. So now it's come to life. Music everywhere, people everywhere. It's almost too loud. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically multiple bars, music at the same time. <laughs> it's hard to even talk here. I have to shout. <laughs> Carol, imagine staying in these hotels. Nightmare. Nightmare. You're never getting to sleep there. So basically only at the end of the road on each side it gets a bit quieter because there in the middle was just mental. We were thinking of eating on this road as well weren't we? Yeah but I think it's too chaotic. Yeah too loud. Check this out here, the alligator. Everybody filming. Yeah I ate alligator in uh, where was it? Yeah but they didn't have a full alligator on show. That's a big one. So you do basically get everything here. There's like souvenir stores as well. Any, all the kinds of shops really, but I don't mind busy places, but when it gets to the point where you're constantly just trying to get through the crowds, it's a bit too much. And when you can't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you have everything. Like you just, you just said, you have like massage places and places to get drunk, places to party and smoke. 
all yeah. sorts of things. <laughs> so it's a crazy road. You can smoke, have a massage, and listen to rave music at yeah. the same time <laughs> and eat crocodile. <laughs> so there's this road almost parallel to Kawasan, and this is more our vibe. So there's a nice amount of movement, bits of music, but yeah, you can talk normally. Still, there's street food everywhere, too. And yeah, some restaurants, so I think this is where we'll get a bite to eat. Lots of options still. So we decided to come to this spot here. Pretty laid back. Not sure what the name is. Doesn't even have it on the menu. I think I'm gonna go for this pork satay with toast. 180. It's kind of like uh, pork on a skewer. I've had that before. And I'm also going for the shake, which is 90. I'm getting a vegetable pad thai for 120 baht. Pad thai, yeah. the famous. We're just heading back to our hotel room now. It's been a really awesome day, just really happy to be back here in Bangkok. Seen some new places and revisiting some places that we love that we've been before. And we plan on making more videos here, so stay tuned for those. If you like this one, just drop a like to support us as usual. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you around.